Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep vale Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Hallelujah, I am rejoicing Singing his praises, Jesus is mine In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing Pressing my way to mansions above Singing his praises, gladly I'm walking Walking in sunlight, sunlight of love Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Hallelujah, I am rejoicing Singing his praises, Jesus is mine Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Hallelujah, I am rejoicing Singing his praises, Jesus is mine Amen Good morning. Good to see you all. Let me quickly ask you to smile, show your teeth off. That looks good. Now show it off to someone else. Go. Now, um, you may have noticed that our pastor, Ryan, he is not here this morning. He will be out of town this week. He is beginning his doctorate studies, so please be in prayer for, prayer for uh, him as he travels, um, but he will be back next week. So today, the service will look a little bit different than normal. You may see some um, different faces leading music and coming up here and sharing some words on their hearts with you, so I'm just excited that you are here this Sunday to experience that. Now... Hopefully you've looked over the bulletin. If not, don't worry. I'm going to highlight a few things that you need to know about. Um, right after the service, grab some lunch, take a quick nap, and then everyone get back here at 2 o'clock. Because from 2 to 4, we will celebrate Miss Marilyn. And um, we want you all to be there. Give her a big old hug. Um, and just please, you know, be in prayer for, for that family as well. And also, we are in need of help feeding them throughout the weeks. Um, so if you are interested in doing that, there's a sign-up where you can provide a meal for the family. And that sign-up sheet, I believe, is in this little hallway area. Um, or you can see, who, who can you see? Shar Honda. Shar Honda back there. Shar Honda, you can see her. She will give you the sign-up. All right, youth. Make sure that you are here at 5 o'clock this afternoon. We are going to do our Bible study. All right, Wednesday, I believe there's a baked potato, tater, bar. Yes, super excited about that. And that will be at 530. And it's important. If your name's not on the list or if you are just questioning, am I on the list? Call the office and just make sure so that our cooks know that we have enough food for Wednesday night. And if you need to cancel for any reason, do the same. Call and get your name off of the list. All right, May 19th, if you have graduated in the last year, we want to recognize you on that day, but we also want to put some informa information in an insert in the bulletin. So if you could ha uh, call the office, see Miss Christie to get that information in before so we can have that in the bulletin on the 19th. And then if you are interested in playing golf, there's a guy here named Mike. He likes golf a little bit, and he's planned a tournament. If you are interested in playing golf in this tournament, see Mr. Mike Duncan. He's up top. And then I have someone handsome coming up here, Mr. Al Boozer. He has some information to tell us about. Well, good morning. Um, good morning. <clears throat> on behalf of the 
Properties and Grounds Committee. I would like to give you just a little um, progress report on some of the things that we've done and things that we'll hope to be doing. Uh, as you know, our committee, along with some others, are charged with maintaining our physical structure here as well as the properties and the grounds on the outside. And over the course of time, we have identified some areas that, that need attention, um, repair, replacement, maintenance, all those things combined. Um, uh, in, in fact, this past week, we had one of our HVAC units uh, replaced that uh, uh, works part of this sanctuary, one of the big units, and we got around 30 plus years out of it, so I think we got our money's worth <laughs> on it. So, uh, but then the, the, I guess the big item, uh, we've been working on getting some good, uh, good solid quotes on repaving our parking lot. Um, if you notice out there, particularly if you come by after a rain, uh, there's more water on the parking lot than not. And so it's starting to dis disintegrate. And so we've got a good quote there um, that we um, feel good about. We got a, a sagging roof line that's um, uh, got some heavy weight on it that we need to reinforce and, and shore that up. Uh, we've got some um, possible uh, purchases in the kitchen for um, a stove or some things like that. So we've been working with the uh, finance committee and the fundraising committee uh, to provide a plan <clears throat> moving forward. And we hope to have those plans ready uh, in the near future uh, that we can present those to you, the congregation, for your consideration. And uh, so if you've got any questions or comments, concerns, uh, any of the members of the properties and grounds and or finance committee or fundraising, uh, we'll be glad to entertain those uh, questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Al, and for all the hard work y'all have been doing. All righty, let's begin our time together with prayers. Would you please pray with me? Loving Lord, we are grateful to have this place, sunshine this morning. In your presence. May we give our all to you this morning as we worship you. Clear away all of the anxieties, the burdens and troubles that we carried with us inside. May be with those that are on our hearts and on our minds, those that are sick and in pain and who are grieving. We lift them up. We lift up this church, this community, this nation, and our world. At times, Lord, we feel a bit hopeless, but please use us to bring the love, the compassion, and joy that can only be found in you into this world. May you be glorified. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Nikki, for asking me to say a few words this morning. Um, I'm going to read our scripture, and then I'm just going to have a few comments about um, what Isaiah has to say in chapter 25, the verse, first ver nine verses. So let's read those together. The first thing I'd like to point out that Isaiah is given um, sort of a testimony here when he says, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin, the foreigners' palaces a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of the ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in its distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthlessness is like a storm against a wall. Like heat in a dry place, you subdued the noise of the foreigners. As heat by the shade of the cloud, so the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all of you peoples 
a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a rich food full of marrow of aged wine well defined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that has cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over the nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will be taken away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited on him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We've waited on him. Let us be glad and enjoy his salvation. Thanks, but this is the word of the Lord. (laughs) All right. Well, as I mentioned, um, notice right off the bat that Isaiah says in the very first verse, you are my God. So we can personalize this within ourselves. He's telling us that, and we should remember that we serve a personal God to all the world, but yet to ourself. He also writes about how it'll be when all things are made new. We should look forward to that day. It also tells about how things are now, though. How do we live well until he fulfills his promise and comes again? Paul speaks of it when he says, finish the race. How do we finish well? Isaiah speaks of how God will be a refuge for the poor, the needy, those in distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Those words are encourage us now. Give us hope now, assurance now, joy now, peace now. It can build a strong day in the personal God that we serve. Nikki did ask me to encourage you this morning. I want to share three things just that through my own life that I've used that come to, came together in these um, verses oddly, not oddly. I don't believe in coincidence. But um, so the first of the three things, um, as I titled the, this this morning, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So... The first thing that I want to um, tell you, and you might, I have this jotted down in one of my Bibles from years ago. I will trust you today because you carried me yesterday. I will, Isaiah says, I will exalt and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you've done marvelous things, things that were planned long ago. We can have to, a faith today because of what he has already done, we can look back. Because of yesterday, we can have faith today. I'll trust you today because you carried me yesterday. It is a personal God. Your trials are not going to look exactly like mine. Mine's not going to look exactly like yours. But they're all personal to God. The great hymn, Amazing Grace, says, Through many toils and snares I've already come. We should remember that he has already done what he has already done to build our faith for today. The second thing that I have used um, at times of something that I read in a book somewhere, don't have any idea where I got this, but it says tomorrow will be better than today. Now, we think in the concept of time, don't we? God doesn't work in the concept of time. He is endless time, beginning and end. So, whatever we're going through, living through today, we're going to wake up. It may be months, it might be a year, but we're going to wake up in tomorrow. And we're going to be able to apply that last, that first concept, it, of tomorrow is, is going to be better to, than today. God is going to take us through whatever. The, lastly, I want to go back again to the part about Isaiah when he says, you are my God. We can all say that. And I just, um, 
I had this given to me years ago, and I've read through it many times. It's rather long, so I'm going to read you part of it. But it just talks about this God that is personal to us. Who is he? Here's the, just some of the things he is. God is Lord Almighty, omnipotent King, Lion of Judah, Rock of Ages, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, Provider, Protector, He is Father, He is Helper, He is Guardian, He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, He is the Creator that keeps all of creation. He always was, always is, and always will be. He, he is unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing, pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom, dead and brought life, risen and brings power. He reigns, reigns and he brings peace. He is light, love, and Lord. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and pure. He is my Redeemer, my Savior, my God, my peace, my joy, and my comfort. I will serve him because his burden is light, his bond is love, and his goal for me is upon abundant life. I'll follow him because he is the wisdom of the wise and the power of the powerful. He will never leave me, never forsake me, never mislead me, never forget me. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm lost, he's my way. When I'm afraid, he's my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I'm hurt, he heals me. When I'm broken, he mends me. When I'm blind, he leads me. When I have problems, he comforts me. When I face loss, he provides for me. When I face death, he'll carry me home. He is everything for everybody, everywhere, in every way. God is in control and I'm on his side. All is well with my soul yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We've asked uh, Rhonda and Levi if they'll come up and lead us in this uh, next hymn. It's been a long time since we've done this course. It says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, taken straight from Psalm 18. So let's stand. Now listen, here's what we got to do. First off, stand. I thought I'd been there. <laughs> Ladies, you're going to go with Rhonda. Gentlemen, you're going to go with Levi. Linnell. <laughs> you're, you're, gentlemen, you'll be like me. Just do everything she says. I will call upon the Lord. Let's sing this wonderful hymn, all right?
Let's pray. Father, our God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come to this place in this time this morning. We thank you for the evidence of your beauty all around. We thank you for the springtime that we can realize new growth, renewal of our spirits. We just thank you for our church. We thank you for our church family. And we just lift Marilyn up this morning to you as we celebrate her time with us. Just a special friend. We thank you now for allowing us to come and give back to you a portion of those things that you've given to us. They're all yours anyway. These things are asked in Christ's name. Amen. Doesn't take much time for that to sink in, does it? No time at all. Looking around at everyone, uh, I don't guess y'all are as nervous about me being up here as I am. <laughs> don't it don't look it don't look like it. <laughs> well, you might ought to be. Uh, Nikki asked me to do it. I appreciate it, Nikki. Um, she gave me a time limit, and I told her that would not be a problem. Y'all bear with me. We're going to read the Philippians 4 through 9, and I want to share a few of, I guess, my thoughts. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, 
with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put that into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. What does it mean to rejoice? The dictionary says to express joy or gladness. How do you express it? Can others look at you or be around you and see your joy? If not, why? Troubles of the world got you down? Can others see the gentleness in you? If not, why? doesn't cost much to be gentle, but sometimes that's not very popular, which brings me around to the statement, I like him or her because they tell you what they think. Thoughts, though, sometimes are not usually very gentle and can be downright harsh. After Paul's gentleness statement, he wrote, The Lord is near. If then the Lord is near, why don't I act like Seems like I pay more attention to the statement that Santa Claus is watching you than the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Yeah, right. Look around at the world. If you're not worried, some would say that you have your head stuck in the sand. As a follower, I sometimes justify my worry by thinking that maybe God has put me in charge of worrying about this or that. That ain't right. What is right is when you first feel a little need to start worrying, go to God in prayer immediately. Ask him to handle it and me to accept it. Problem solved. Oh, don't forget the Thanksgiving part of your prayer. That's the most important part. Paul said then that something special will happen. The peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but my mind really needs to be closely guarded. My heart usually stays put. So if my mind be guarded by the peace of God, what do I think about? Think about whatever's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, anything that are excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. I want to add some more two cents worth here. We might also want to go to God first and always to discern what each of these above things mentioned actually are. On each word, what does it mean? Is it true? After all is said and done, only one opinion or idea matters, God's. And ending in verse 9, Paul said that whatever you have learned or received from or heard from me, do it. Put it into practice. So, y'all, there is work involved. There are some things that we should do. Some things come natural, but others we have to work on. It has to be an intentional thing. Practice makes perfect, right? I have longed most of my life for God to vie for my attention more than the world does. But anything I lack in my life, I have come to know is my own fault. So wake up rejoicing with the knowledge God is with you at all times. Practice doing the good things, and we all need help. Ask God for the help, because he waits to talk to all of us. Amen. Um, Nikki asked if we would sing this song uh, today. Caroline, come on up. They asked me to put together a praise team. <laughs> Looks good to me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life. Let's stand as we sing this wonderful old hymn of the church. Be seated. Psalms twenty-three. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Well, Psalm twenty three, it's a favorite of many. I guess you would agree. It's commonly read at funerals, bringing hope, and comfort, and peace to those experiencing grief. And from the very first verse, the theme of hope and security draws any reader into that beautiful poetry. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, therefore I have it all. What an appropriate message to receive when you are faced with the depths of sorrow and despair. But we fail to recognize the true value of this psalm when we only associate these six verses with the hereafter or death. So the imagery of Psalm 23 is established in the genuine experiences of the nomadic lives of Shepherds in Israel, Palestine. One might envision lush green pasture lands and an endless supply of water. However, there's little certainty and consistency for the Middle Eastern shepherd. The terrain in most places are 
very rocky and continuously hilly. The rain amounts are inadequate, even in the rainy seasons. So as a result, movement is needed. Journeying through the land is essential for their survival, the shepherds and the flock. And likewise, our own personal journey is reflected in this psalm, Psalm 23, the movement of our life now. We see in verses 2 and 3, he leads me beside still waters and right paths. Verse 4, I walk through the valley, darkest valley. And then in verse 5, you prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. And then in verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Now, all of these verbs found in this psalm, they are used in the present tense. It's not something that has been accomplished in the past, but right now. Leads, walk, prepare, anoint, follow, they all signify constant activity, movement toward a goal. And that goal, dwelling with the Lord all your life. In the summer of 1997, I spent two months in the inner city of Houston, Texas. I worked uh, as a student missionary at Mission, uh, Houston Mission Center alongside 25 or so high school and college students from all over the world. I mean, uh, it was my first time to be away from home, scary, scary situation for me at first. There were no cow pastures or small country roads like here in Williams. But the fast-paced life of the city was intimidating at first, but I eventually, quite quickly, I actually felt peace among all that noisy traffic and graffiti. Now, all of us students, we shared this old 1930s, three-story home. It had been converted into large dorm rooms filled with bunk beds to the ceiling and on special occasions, giant flying cockroaches. And, and there was an older, retired couple, Ann and Olin. They volunteered as house parents. They supervised us kids. And we just saw them as like our adopted grandparents for the summer. But each day, we would pack bags with meals for the food pantry to be distributed out into the community. We would assist Spanish-speaking locals with ESL classes, English as a second language. And we would organize, this is my favorite, and provide Bible school for the local community kids. Now, good days. Those good days were filled with hugs and laughter and sweat mixed with finger paint. But... When the days were not so good, we would be cussed at in Spanish by some unruly children or break up combative teenagers with gang-related issues. Or if we were really unlucky, we would have to treat our hair for unwanted visitors or bugs. We just came with the territory. But whatever excitement or commotion the day delivered, Psalm 23, that particular song was read as a reminder to remind us of our purpose, our calling for that moment, that summer. It reminded us of the comfort and the joy and the hope that is found in this constant presence of the good shepherd. So much so it was a favorite that one of the students, her name was Leslie, she was a talented writer. She wrote our own version of Psalm 23 for us student missionaries. And it goes like this. The Lord is my house parent, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in my bunk bed. He leads me to air conditioning. He restores my soul. He guides me through the inner city for his namesake. Even though I walk through the alley of gang graffiti, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your chain-link fence and your iron bars, they comfort me. And boy, did they. 
You prepare a table before me down the street from the nightclub. You anoint my head with bread. My Kool-Aid cup overflows. Surely hugs and kisses will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the dorm of the Lord forever. That spoke to us in that moment. Let's keep going with another version of Psalm 23 from the message written by Eugene Peterson. He translated the original Greek and Hebrew scriptures into a modernized language. Now, it's not my go-to Bible translation, but I do enjoy reading from it from time to time. And it invites today's readers to examine the scripture in a more contemporary way. And he writes it like so. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love, I love this, chase after me every day of my life. Oh, I love that. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. The 23rd Psalm, it speaks more to life than death. The psalm emphasizes not only that we will be met with Christ's embrace once we take that last breath, but also God's goodness and mercy is currently moving as we journey through life, as we face the burdens and even the ordinary experiences of each day. So I want you to think What part of Psalm 23 expresses the current movement of your own life? Are you and the shepherd in green pastures along still waters? Do you sit at a table of a bountiful feast at peace with the enemy? Is your cup abundantly full? Or are you experiencing thirst and hunger? You're walking deep in the dark valley, seeking restoration. What is it that speaks to you? Look at the psalm. Hopefully it'll come up on the board and you'll be able to use that. Um, Or you can look in your Bible or you can read it. But if you might have noticed at your seat, there are a clothespin and a marker. Grab that if you would, for yourself. And if you see any extras around, pass them along to those who may not have one. If y'all would help each other out. We're back seat Baptist. There's going to be a lot more in the back. What I want you to do is that part of the psalm that you're thinking of, it could be a verse or part of a verse that expresses your life, represents you right now. I want you to write it quite small. You're going to have to write small. On one side of your clothespin, just one. Do that now.
And as you finish, I want you to take your closed hand and switch with someone. It could be with one person or multiple people. But I'll give you a moment to finish up and switch. And you can get out of your seat. I'll allow it. Okay, so hopefully you now have a closed pen. One side is blank, okay? Well, on that blank side, now I want you to think about Psalm 23. What wording, what element of the psalm is most encouraging, most uplifting for you? It could be three words. Write it on the blank side now. All right, so in your hand, you have a clothespin, one side. It represents someone's life currently here in this room. You don't even have to know the name of that person. God knows. And then on the other side of your clothespin, it's something uplifting to you. So I want you to take this clothespin with you, put it in a place, clip it, in an area where you frequent the most so that you pray for that person, and that you also are praying for your own life as you read that encouraging part of the psalm. Because with all of life's ups and downs, twists and turns, through all the joy and the sadness, wherever the movement of your life's journey takes you, Remember, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we once again remind ourselves of that psalm that surely goodness and mercy will follow us. Let's sing just the chorus. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. That's beautiful. 
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Can we sing that one more time? Just, the, just your voices. Surely good. Amen.